Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the uh, new moon chart for March 8th, the new moon eclipse. It's going to be in Pisces at 18 degrees. I was going to say 8 degrees, but it's on March 8th, that's why I'm wanting to say that. Uh, 8.54 p.m. Eastern Time, times will vary. Well, this is uh, this is it. Look at all this Pisces energy here. We've got Mercury, Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, Ceres, Moon, Sun, Chiron, South Node. So we're we're deep in it. We're in the deep water here with the Pisces energy for sure. And of course, it's it's uh, we've it's aligning with this nodes. You know, we've got the the North Node and Jupiter together. So it's so much about this this Virgo Pisces axis, which I spoke about in the last reading, and I've been speaking about off and on as uh, since the nodes have moved into this excess. Well, last time I talked a lot about this Virgo energy and being really busy and everything. Um, with, all, with such a concentration of the Pisces energy now, as we're really moving in there, and an eclipse, eclipses are more powerful. Eclipses last a good six months, the energy, whereas a normal new moon only lasts for the moon cycle of 28 days, uh, you know, this lasts longer, and it's more powerful anyway, be just because it's an eclipse. And in this case, it's so powerful too, I think because it's with the nodes, that's the, what the eclipse is, but it's got Chiron in there too. Um, and then Jupiter is on the south node, so this is about going deep. This is about um, feeling our feelings. Um, going into the deep water, healing these deep wounds with this Chiron here. It's right in between um, the sun, and the eclipse point, the sun, moon, eclipse point, and the node sandwiched right in the middle there. We've got Chiron. So, you know, Chiron is a key player in this. This is really going to help. Uh, we're going to access these deep realms. We're going to access these deep wounds that are beyond, um, you know, it's this lifetime, it's other lifetimes, it's generational. It's hereditary karma. It's the family karma. It's the oceans. Yeah, you know, we've got a. Uh, this is because I just get this strong feeling about how the Earth is speaking to us through this. And you know, the Earth is, a, you know, the ocean is a large part of the Earth, and a large part of our body is the water and everything. So there's this. Um, it can be overwhelming. You know, you can get carried away with the water energy. The water, you can drown in the water energy. It can, it can wash. Um, I'm hearing that Catholic thing again. I think I used that in one of the Animal Totem books, but I'm hearing wash away the sins of the world. And that's something from my Catholic uh, dogma upbringing there. It's the Lamb of God. Have mercy on us. It's this whole thing. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Lamb, I'm not sure of the whole thing, but it's Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. You know, or wash away the sins of the world, you know, I'm hearing that. And I feel like this is what this is. It's like some grand cleanse. You know, it is a new moon, so it is a time uh, for a new beginning. It's time to turn over a new leaf, make a new beginning. Um, I wanted to address a little bit more about this Virgo thing while I'm thinking of it. Yeah, in the last reading I was saying, oh, it's just too much. We're Virgo, Virgo, we're too busy, we're too busy. Um... This Virgo energy is going to be nice to ground us in all this. Because <laughs> this can just be uh, too much sometimes. You can be too dreamy and kind of out of it and too not able to get wrap your mind or your head around or get your feet on the ground, you know. So that's why this Jupiter and um, the node together is so nice. I feel like it's going to help us get grounded, help us take these big dreams because it's a new moon eclipse. It's this new big dreams we want to make. Um, it's the universal consciousness. It's this big energy of all these planets, including Neptune, which is Pisces ruler, all being in here. So uh, take all this um, deep spiritual, what do, what do we find? And then Virgo, use it in an everyday practical sense. Bring it into our practical lives. You know, um, Virgo energy is very useful. It's, you know, the negative side of it is you can be too much a workaholic and too busy in your head and stuff. But the positive side is it can take all this stuff, bring it into the earth plane, make it see tangible results in your own life. You know, because Virgo is a house of, uh, I tried to run that flat wheel and it was just changing all the planets. Off, so I have to look into that more. But I, I'm going to try to start putting zero areas on the Ascendant. Uh, but I couldn't do it. So 
for those of you that aren't familiar in the flat wheel, Virgo is the natural rule of the sixth house. So Virgo energy, sixth house, similar energy. It rules health. And it could be your mental health with all this Pisces stuff, for sure. It could be your emotional health with all this Pisces stuff. And the Chiron, you know, that's that has a lot to do with it. So we're feeling all these deep feelings. We're, we're you know, find, seeing all these wounds and coming up from ourselves and our family line, humanity in general, our past lives, everything. It's all bubbling to the surface through the water. It's uh, bubbling up. Um, and so then what do you do with it all? Well, that's where the Virgo energy comes in. Let's, let's make practical use of it. Let's use it for healing in our everyday lives, sixth house. Let's use it um, in our work. Let's do sacred work. Let's do sacred, holy, spiritual work. And it doesn't have to be you go out and uh, you join a missionary thing. You know, it, it can be in, in, in everyday, you know, it's, it's everyday stuff. Because, um, you know, it's, it's your everyday environment. Some other things that I want to get into, because uh, there's some other big aspects to this. Uh, there's these two are the opposition, but we've got the Saturn and the square of it. So you've got a T-square with Saturn and Sag. Sagittarius is also, um, you know, what's the ninth house, which is uh, religion, education, all that stuff. Saturn is karmic. So we have a karmic obligation um, to do this spiritual work. Um, and it's a lot of it's inner. It doesn't even have to be. I mean, great. I mean, you, everyone should. And yeah, go out and help people. That's That would be an awesome manifestation, sure. But it, it has to do with your own stuff. And if you've come through, this is like about remembering too. With Saturn and the Pisces and all this south node. Remembering. Because I, I see people sometimes, you know, they've, they've come a long way in your life and that's a great thing. But don't, it's like don't forget where you came from. Don't forget to give back. Don't forget to give. Uh, sometimes we see things like... Um, for two in the outer world, and Pluto is in there too, in Capricorn. It's at 17, we've got all this stuff here. That's a sextile, Pluto and Capricorn, which is also earthly energy. Pluto trining the north node. So we can make great strides in moving forward and progress in our life. Sometimes, people, we get in this place where we've come so far, we've pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps, you know, and clawed our way out of a bad situation, and then we see it in somebody else, and right away, it's just like, oh, that's not me. Oh, I want to shut that down. Oh, I don't want to look at that. You know, with this Chiron in the South, no, we got to look at it. And not only that, Saturn, you have a karmic obligation um, to help, to teach. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be on this big grand scale. It could just be on a one-to-one -one basis. It could just be talking, you know, because uh, Mercury is the ruler of uh, Virgo here. So it could just be like talking to somebody. And, and Mercury is also in this big splay of this Pisces stuff, conjunct Neptune over here, Mercury-Neptune. So it can just be like talking to being, um, giving somebody a boost on a one-to-one -one basis. It doesn't have to be a big grand scale, although it could be, because this is like all of humanity and... Um, you know, Sagittarius ninth house is like that too. That's the teacher. That's the educator. So with Saturn there, we have to learn from our our mistakes and our ancestors' mistakes and humanity's mistakes, and we have to do better. Like uh, I was going to say Nora Ephron, but of course it was not Nora Ephron. I'm totally blanking uh, the poet lady. God, what's her name? But the saying is, uh, when you know better, you do better. I can see her face, and I can't believe I don't know her name. Because I know it like the back of my hand. <laughs> That's the spicy energy. <laughs> well, for some reason, I was compelled to say Nora Ephron, too. So maybe she had some kind of quote that's uh, applicable to this. But, um, God, what is her name? I can't, th it's, I mean, it's going to drive me nuts. I'll have to just leave it. It'll come to me. I know it like the back of my hand. But she says, when you know better, you do better. So it can be like that. You do know better. You've been through your suffering. We've been through our suffering. We've been through the age of Pisces. We've been through the martyrdom. You know. So uh, the Virgo says it was not all for naught. You know, 
um, the Virgo says, the water's going to dissipate and remove and cleanse and clear what we can't, what is not useful. Because Virgo is what's useful. How can I make use of this? And Capricorn energy is very much like that. How can I be useful to build into the future in a real, uh, practical, uh, earthly way? Because we are in the earth plane. We're in earth bodies here. So how can I um, take all this universal knowledge, all this pain and suffering, purge it, and uh, get rid of what you don't want, and keep what you do and use it in a positive way? And Virgos are very good at doing that. And Capricorn's like, well, how are we going to be successful with this? How are we going to rise up in the world with this? How are we going to climb to the top of the mountain with this? And Saturn is uh, the ruler of Capricorn. So Saturn energy is involved in two ways, through Pluto being in Capricorn, uh, sextiling this and trining this, and uh, Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, being in the big T-square with... Uh, this axis of the Virgo Pisces axis. Because it's such powerful energy of the eclipse and the Jupiter is conjuncting the North Node, which is the direction we're going in, personally or as a collective or whatever, where are we going? We're going towards the Virgo energy. How are we going to get there? Through work and hard toil. There's going to be some work and effort involved. You can't just dream, dream it away. All, I mean, you could. You could dream it away all day, you know. But then somebody else is going to come along and do it. So, uh, you know, it's going to require some hard work. It's going to require some down-to-earth with the earth signs, practical application, practical uh, sense. You, know, you can't just drift off into never-never land. I mean, you can. I, I, I have to watch why I say that. I, I, I tend to say that a lot. Um, but one way is to drift off the Never Never Land and never, uh, never see it. your dreams become a reality. This is a great moon for having your dreams become a reality. Dreams and reality. These are the two dichotomies that we're working with. So, very, very powerful. Um, riding that wave. This is so funny. This is one of the, speaking of the collective consciousness, I've never been surfing in my life. There's no surf in Cleveland, USA. There was a song on <laughs> it about that one time. Uh, and I've never been surfing. Um, but I was saying that, I started saying that riding the wave thing, I don't know, maybe in the 90s or something like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm riding the wave, baby. And, um, you know, it's a common expression now. But that's one of those things. It's like that was in the collective unconscious, or the collective conscious, and... Um, it wasn't related to any experience I'd ever had, you know, but I started saying that because it's, there's this fluid, there's a collective unconscious, there's the broadcast from the universe, the universe is always broadcasting. Well, it's broadcasting big time here with this, uh, you know, sun, moon, uh, and eclipse thing in uh, Pisces. It's, it, this is a major broadcast from the universe. So be ready to tune in, be ready to take what you can, uh, what you pick up, what you download, what's broadcasted to you and start using it in your practical life for a more successful life for a life of Sagittarius ninth house of uh, living on a higher plane you know living living um, seeing things from a bigger level because the, the you know the, the downside of well there's a lot of downsides to the Neptune Pisces energy but um, you know there's escapism and there's also the victim mentality the martyr again so you could really get, some people could get stuck in this uh, Chiron thing. And, oh, you know, I'm the victim, and, you know, we're the, it's the martyr time. And, you know, um, it's time to rise above that with Saturn and Sagittarius. And with Saturn, Saturn and Sagittarius, this is karmic. And with, it's a karmic on a grand level. And it's like, this is what many were here to do. We're not just here to um, get what we want, you know, uh, in a, you know, that way. You know, you do the dreaming to manifest the law of attraction, which is cool. But we're here to rise above. We're here to take the Earth to the next level. Uh, that's why we've incarnated Saturn, you know, to take it to a higher, out of this, uh, this age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. 
and with this Jupiter conjunct. I picked this up if you haven't, I haven't talked about it before, but if you, oops, sorry if you missed that one. Um, I picked this up on some people that were born in the 60s with the Pluto and the Virgo, and uh, it's been showing up in those past life charts I do. And they were called to heal the Earth. And this is it. This eclipse opposing Jupiter conjunct, um, you know, this is it. If you were born at Pluto and Virgo, this is activating this big time. It's like wake-up call. Hello, hello, McFly. <laughs> Remember you came to Earth with a mission? Not to just, you know, get acquire things and, you know, well, be Pluto, you know, rise up and be successful in the world. You have a mission. It's to learn and teach and grow. Maya Angelou, thank you. <laughs> When you know better, you do better. Okay, thank you for that, universe. So it's really there. And, you know, Mars is in there, too. It's not conjunct Saturn, but Mars is in Sag. So, you know, where are we going to put our effort and work? Mars is where we're going to work, too. We're going to put our effort and work into the ninth house, into speaking, educating, um, higher knowledge, you know, beyond the the usual. So... You know, this is like the past and the South known this. So you're born born into families and we're programmed. You know, we're programmed into our family drama. Because this is this Chiron in the South Node. It goes beyond your personal karma. So you're born into these families, too, to transcend all that bullshit. And that's a lot what this is about, too. You know, uh, you choose these families. I know some people don't want to believe that, but you do. You choose your, your family when you're, when you're going to incarnate on the Earth plane. So, and... Um, even if you don't believe you chose it, you still, what's what's your options? Stay in the suffering and, oh, I'm just a victim because my family, you know, blaming, blaming, a victim, victim. Or I'm going to take this energy of what I've been through and I'm going to make it make myself stronger. I'm going to learn more. I'm going to rise to the next level. I'm going to also, I'm going to have some understanding about it. I'm not just going to be blaming you, you did this to me. Uh, well, maybe you did this to me because your parents did this to you. You know, there's this higher level. I keep pointing up ninth house because that's Sagittarius's realm. Uh, you know, you, the, the ninth house energy is, you know, um, and Saturn is the karma of the family. It is, you know, and Pluto is um, Capricorn and Pluto there. So we're 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 digging up this karma of the family, you know. Um, and I'm going to have some understanding, and I'm going to see that you're just a person just like me, and that you were doing the best you could. And I'm going to know better about what happened, and I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better with my own kids or grandkids or with just people at large, you know, people who are suffering the same pains that I'm suffering, instead of being like, oh, you know, so, so many people I see, like, they're just like, oh, well, you know, they have this attitude, like, if somebody's in a bad place, it's like, well, I used to be there, but now I'm I'm here. So I'm so much better than, you know, screw that. You know, because you, you know, don't forget where you come from. Don't, bur you know, burn those bridges because you could, the universe could kick you in the ass and you could get knocked right back down there. But it's not even that way, like out of fear. It's be it's past that too. So it shouldn't be like, oh, I should be nice because I, it could happen to me again. Like like some punishing karmic uh, God's gonna strike you with the lightning bolt. No, it's like you know better, you do better. You rise to the next um, level. You go to that higher place. You have um, a broader understanding about it. A broader understanding about everything that went down in your life. Or, or, or let's look at it this way, you know, because Ninth House is foreigners. Oh, I hate those, they're so this, they're so that, you know, they're so, you know, the foreigners, they're the bad guys, right? No, uh, you have to have some understanding. What if you were born in a situation like that? You know, it, it could be hard to shake that belief system. And um, it, it could be really hard. It's Look how hard it is for us to break out of our little family drama karma stuff you know and um our belief systems the reason that we think they're bad or they're evil doers or whatever is because of our beliefs that we were indoctrinated into so this is going much deeper than that this is going to that soul level with the pisces energy this is getting into those deep waters i mean that's really what it is it's very powerful to manifest um into uh there's a saturn square yeah but you've got a strong sextile with this pluto and we've got the jupiter node in there so it's it's again this wake-up call 
to what are we really here for? North node with Jupiter. North node, what are we here for? Jupiter is like, let's get into it. Let's get busy. Um, and get busy in a good way. With this kind of energy, nobody's going to be getting, trying to be getting busy. This is going to be like, it can be very lethargic, very dreamy, very, I feel like I don't want to do anything except, you know, sit around and dream a little dream, you know. Uh, it would be beneficial to go to the water. Go to the water. This would be a great new moon to do some manifesting. Go to the water. Write down your affirmations and what you want to manifest on little pieces of paper. Put them in the water and let it float away on the stream. You know. But then you got to come and you got to take practical action. You got to be. Um, you know. Saturn is. You got to go to a new way. It's it's getting out of the little mind and into the higher mind. And this is the subconscious. So we've got the energy of the higher mind and the subconscious working together, calling us towards our life destiny. Pretty freaking powerful, you know. So powerful energy, everyone. So uh, take advantage of it. Uh, I have a couple things going on. I'm going to be releasing a few things on that date. My deck is coming out. I've finished the deck. I'm waiting for the test copy to come. And it's going to be out. Uh, hopefully I'll have it by then, but the other thing that I've been working on and I'm going to be releasing right at that date of the new moon is uh, some color, adult color therapy, um, coloring books, relaxation therapy, de-stressing therapy. Coloring is very, very relaxful and it lets your mind just kind of wander. The, the thing that's really cool about this one, I have a coloring book and journal. It, it's my animal totem cards, if any of you haven't seen it. And what I've done is there's blanks of there's 44 uh, animal totem cards to color in, but then on the in between pages there's going to be spots I put notes, because I found too when I was creating this deck and when I was coloring this deck, a lot would come to me. You're spending a lot of time with this animal energy. You know you're spending. Um, it takes a long time to color. Some of these are very simple, and more simple, and, and, cause, and some of them are very intricate, you know. Uh, so if you want to do one that's intricate, you can do that. If one that's not so intricate, you know, you can do that. Um, but when you're, you're doing, you're working on a piece like this, and you're coloring, and you're in, the, you're in the energy of the animal, and so much can come to you. And you're kind of like detaching. It's relaxing because you're kind of detaching from your, you're letting your mind wander. So I put a spot where you can write notes down because I feel like many people will be picking up things as they're doing the coloring. I feel like you're going to be picking up things, you know, from the spirit of the animal. So there's a section there where you can write down notes, thoughts. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm a psychic, I'm tuning in, you know, woo-woo. You can just be like, oh, I had a thought. I'm just... Jot it down. And I think it's going to be really cool in that way. I, and I'm, I'm going to do more of these adult coloring books. This is my new passion. I'm really into it. I started with the animal um, totem one because I already had the line drawings. But actually it took quite a bit of work to get them um, into shape as coloring books and stuff. But I did it. So this is coming out. This is what I'm releasing on the Eclipse and my new tarot deck. So I'm going to try to take uh, advantage of you know, me with my Scorpio Rising. That's my. This is my fifth house of creativity. So I'm unleashing all my creative energy on everybody. <laughs> okay, here it is. Um, it's the ending too. That's the other thing. It's like the last gasp of the Piscean age. That was the other thing I was going to say about it. So, take advantage of this new moon. Dream your little dreams. Get out of the blaming. Take it to the higher level, and then implement it in your everyday life for practical means. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, everything you do to support the channel, including donating, which is highly appreciated. Remember you are love and beauty incarnate. Have a great new moon eclipse on March 8th in Pisces, and I'll speak to you soon.